This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Storm here with King Gad, Gareth A. Davies. How are you, mate? Just, do, just doing my thumbnail pick, cheeky Charlie Parsons, because I know you like it when I have a little vape. Got to do it for the thumbnail, get the views in, mate. Get a little bit of abuse for the, uh, for the shouldn't be vaping indoors, but I've got the blue matching one today. I hope you took that into account. Is that, is that where we're at now, Gareth? We're coordinating the vapes with the no, it's purely luck, <laughs> purely by chance, believe it or not. How are you, mate? Been a little while. Have you had a good time over Christmas? Good start to the new year? Maybe a bit of downtime, refreshing, chilling? Yes, indeed. Have we not spoken since in the new Genuinely year? Genuinely have, I don't think. Wow, we're almost the whole way into the month and we haven't... I know. <laughs> That's why I had to you, Gareth. Yeah, I know. You always pounce, yeah, cheeky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Recently, the age would be. Um, how do you analyze, uh, sort of analyze this fight? Yeah, I mean, I agree with all those points. Um, but, you know, 18 fights, 18 knockouts in 10 years is an extraordinary record. Um, Anthony Yard is one of the toughest guys he's faced, in my view. He's got heavy hands, and I think Anthony's got to make it that kind of fight get on the inside, draw Baturbio Von, and get him into a war, and try and win a battle of attrition in that way. I don't think Anthony outboxed him. Better be ever's got a fantastic amateur pedigree. You know, his two big losses as an amateur to Alexander Usyk at heavyweight at the World Amateur Championships, I think it was, and the Olympic Games in 2012. Um, it's just a phenomenal fight when you think about the two guys and what they're capable of. I don't think Anthony will sit back. I don't think he'll be reckless early, but I think he wants to draw Better Biev into a fight early. If I were him, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure Jay Tunde will be looking at that as well. Um, they're a great combination. He's been through World Championship experience before against Sergei Kovalev and fell just short that day. He's lost and won back against Lyndon Arthur on points, showed how destructive he was in that fight, really showed his style. He had personal issues outside the ring with family yeah. members passing away at times, and I think that's impacted him on him emotionally. It's an amazing fight because he's at home after three of those world title belts. I mean, I think I do see Better Biev as the favorite. Yeah. I do, to, and I'm picking him to win okay. by late stoppage or on points. Yeah. But Anthony has it within him to win this. I think almost quite refreshing for us as boxing fans. When this fight was announced, I made sure that I, I wanted to be the guy covering it. I think from us, UK perspective, to have someone like Baturbi have come over on our shores, now at 38, we don't know how much longer we're going to have him. Could this be his only pro bout in the UK? Maybe so. An exciting time for us to be able to see a true great over here in the UK. There's a real shift. I mean, I know it's an exhibition bout, but Floyd Mayweather's coming here on February 25th against a friend of mine, Aaron Chalmers, who I've known for a number of years. I mean, I hope that comes through for Aaron. Mayweather's realised he wanted to fight here. Manny Pacquiao's coming over to do a, a, a talking tour, isn't he? Canelo coming over. Well, I think Canelo over here will be great as well, but it's a real shift. It used to be having to go to America to prove yourself, yeah. but because of our heavyweights, because of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury filling out stadiums, that resonates around the world. And we've got amazing fans here. We've got, we're a fight nation and we're a fight sport nation. So it's, it's an amazing time. Bob Arum uh, was, was marveling at it with me the other day. Bob's here this week as well, I hope you get him. And it's a brilliant time for British boxing in that sense. It wouldn't surprise me if Better Beer wins on Saturday night and it resonates in a great fight, but that he fights Bivol here. That's doable as well, because Bivol's under Eddie Hearn, so wouldn't surprise me in the least. And it's
Well, he's on DAZN now, isn't he? So it probably will be DAZN pay per view. I don't think they've announced whether it is or not. They may not. They, they may not. They may go and have it open to begin with. Yeah, Jermaine Frank's a good opponent, especially after what happened against Dillian White. It was a close fight. I thought Dillian just shaved that fight, really. I mean, it was a close affair. I was there live. Um, yeah, Franklin's a good test. I mean, and what Anthony Joshua now needs is a couple of spectacular knockouts yeah, to get back in the very, very big yeah. time. And, you know, Franklin's no pushover, but I think he's a good opponent for Anthony Joshua. And I'm pleased he's picked Derek James to go and train in Dallas, Texas and be away from all prying eyes. We need him back. We need his confidence back. And, yeah, I think it's a good opponent. Um, Well, it's up to him what he does. I mean, you know, uh, obviously something wasn't perfect with Robert Garcia, and so he needs to change it up a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, you know, this is a very crucial time for Anthony Joshua. He just needs a win. He's had back-to-back -back yeah. losses after two years. He wants to fight at the very top level. Deontay Wilder, Joe Joyce, Tyson Fury are all massive fights for him. If he can get back into the right shape in terms of what, how, the arc of his career and also probably mentally. Um, we saw what he was like after the Usyk loss in August last year. We were all there and it was a real outpouring from a frustration at himself. Um, so, you know, the Charlo brothers and... Um, the twins and um, who's the other guy? Errol Spence have all come out and said they think Derek James would be good for his confidence and mental state. So good luck to him. You know, Anthony Joshua's transformed British boxing. He's he's been a standout character. We want a strong, powerful, killing machine. Basically, that's where we want him mentally. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. The wrecking ball demolition fighter. Okay, good. You're getting very good at it, but your questions are too long these days. Oh, fair. Well, I mean, let's get this fight announced. I mean, we thought it was going to be in Saudi Arabia. I know that Wembley Stadium is an option late April, uh, as was Saudi. Um, they'll get this over the line. I mean, unless unless they argue about money and they don't. I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think it's a 50-50 fight on the purse splits. But people will argue that Tyson Fury draws the crowd. But Alexander Usyk's got three belts. He's had them two years. Um, and I think he, he deserves his due. Yeah, but 55, 45 maybe. But 60-40 is a bit unfair on him. Um, obviously, what I did know was that both men were doing their own negotiations with Saudi for their own deal. They were doing it separately. Um, but like you say, it looks like, between the lines, it looks like it's heading more towards Wembley Stadium. We're in the masterful shadow of it right now here at the Drum. And that would be York. nice for us. Oh, it would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Gareth, I don't want to keep you too long. I believe the Yard will be working out in just a minute. Um, just lastly, I've got a Ben. We're hearing sort of more and more. Um, I've done my session with Eddie. It looks like we've now got a ring return with that Twice with VADA testing, Conor Ben on the 25th of July and the 1st of September, I think it was, tested positive for the banned substance clomiphene. It was in his body. Prove that the tests were contaminated, fine. Have a reason why it happened, fine. Take a ban if it has to be, fine. But we need more transparency. Boxing Border Control, Robert Smith told me last... Let me just one sec me on Saturday, the Boxing Border Control General Secretary, that they haven't had any information from Conor Ben and his team yet. But we know the WBC had a 270-page report. I remember writing about it when we saw Mauricio at the back end of last year, Mauricio Suleiman of the WBC. We need 
some transparency on it and we need to know what the reasons they're giving for the failed test. It's as simple as that. invoke the rematch clause against Liam Smith. We've never seen him with a lack of tensile strength like that before. I do think the weight cut affected him for the Conor Ben fight. I believe. Back to back cut. Yeah, well, and, and also, I remember Chris telling me he wasn't using a nutritionist. He may have been, I don't know. You never know with Chris. There's a lot of ruses. I want to make this clear. I'm taking nothing away from what Liam Smith did on the night. Because I didn't emphasise that enough on the night, I think. Brilliant performance by him. Um, but it is fascinating that we've seen him in with 160 pound, 168 pound fighters for the best part of seven, eight years, and that he he folded in that way. Uh, massive punch, nine power shots. Liam Smith obviously finished the show brilliantly, um, but I'd like to see them in the ring together one more time, and then maybe that Connor it's time for that Connor Ben fight. But it'll be at middleweight. Gareth, pleasure. Thank you, Chief. Top man. Thank Cheers. Cheers.